Hello, nice to see you again. Today we're going to take a look at the Alcatel A3. This is a really great budget-friendly mobile phone from Alcatel. I do like the Alcatel kit. It has a 5-inch IPS HD display. At the time of review, it was running Android version 6, and it runs it very well. The menu's pretty smooth. They don't add a load of bloatware to this, and overall, it's a very nice experience. Around the back, you've got a removable panel, and that will reveal the battery. You've got the usual charging port on the bottom, volume rockers on the side, all the usual stuff you've come to expect. You take the back off to get to the SIM card and micro SD card slot. The battery isn't removable, but you can see the two slots there and you can fit up to a 128 gigabyte SD card in there, micro SD card. Really unusually for this end of the market, you've got a fingerprint scanner and it works surprisingly well. It's not as fast as something like the OnePlus fingerprint scanner, but do you know what? It works pretty well and a really nice innovation is you can use different fingers and unlock different things. So I've got one set to unlock the device, fingerprint two, is set to open the camera as you just saw, but you can set it to open various things, set timers, navigate home, or if none of the preset things take your liking, you can trigger an application and select an application of your choosing. Quite often on these budget phones, the camera is the area that lets you down, but this has a 30 megapixel rear facing camera, a five megapixel front facing camera, and both prove to be really good at the job. So you can see some pretty decent shots uh, just straight out of the box, no settings or apps or anything like that. These are just straight from the camera and the video quality is pretty good as well. It's done a pretty good job of capturing Tink the Cat. The blackness of our cat does tend to be a problem for these low cost cameras, but I think it's done okay. And this also includes a Snapchat-like filter system. Front facing cameras, also very good. So this is just a quick test of the front facing camera. The screen actually is coping very well. I'm outside and it's quite bright and sunny, but I can still see it okay. And I'm gonna set this up to do a time lapse next and see what the time lapse features look like. So I've been a little bit unfair there because I have faced this towards the sun and I think overall it's coped quite well. You can see it does have a few focusing issues. It jumps in and out a little bit, but overall I think this is a really good solid time-lapse camera. I also like the front-facing speakers because you can't cover them up while playing games. Unfortunately, despite having an octa-core processor, gaming is not fantastic on this. Certainly on these higher-end games such as Asphalt 8, you can see while it is fairly playable, it does drop the frames quite a lot and it's nowhere near as smooth as I would like. The screen's a pretty decent size. You're going to be able to use the on-screen keyboard and you're still going to be able to see the action. But if you're going to do these kind of intensive games and you're into gaming, this probably isn't going to be the mobile for you. Having said that, that seems to be the only weakness of this mobile. It offers an awful lot for not very much money. I think the design's okay. Yes, you're going to have to accept it's a little bit plastic, but the inclusion of a fingerprint scanner is a real bonus and not something I've seen at this price point before. So if you're looking for an overall good mobile and you're not too fussed about hand gaming, this is definitely one to consider. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, why not treat yourself and click the subscribe button above. And if you want to see some more clear and concise reviews, why not check out this video next? Thanks for watching.